Hello, welcome to the Math 135 video for constructing arc secant. My name is Professor Michael Polyuk. The intensity of this video is medium. The learning objectives for this video are, by the end of this video, you should be able to construct the inverse of secant, including its domain and range. You should also be able to make choices about which branches to choose in an inverse function. Let's start with some motivation. How do we choose what branches to keep when we're computing the inverse of x squared? So here's a picture of x squared. And when we reflect it across the line y equals x, we get this shape. Now this isn't a function because it fails the vertical line test. So we have to choose whether we're going to keep the top branch or the bottom branch. So one option would be to pick the top branch. One option would be to pick the bottom branch. And what we end up settling with is the top branch. So that's the one that we've chosen since um, we were in kindergarten. And this gives us our first convention when it comes to choosing branches. So our first convention is when we choose the branch of an inverse, we prefer positive over negative. This will show up in some other examples we do. Now let's look at a second example. How do we choose what branches to keep with the inverse of sine? So here's a picture of sine of x, and when we reflect it across the line y equals x, we get this shape. So now for this one, we have a lot of branches that we could possibly choose. We could choose this region and restrict the domain of sine to this region. We could also choose this region. That's another way to get a function. Or we could choose this region. Or if we don't want positive ones, we could choose this region, and so on. There's many, many different choices to choose, but what we settle on is this one. And in a sense, it kind of feels the most natural. And if we were to put this in words, we might say that we chose this one because it goes through the origin. So that leads us to our next convention. When choosing a branch of an inverse, we prefer the one that touches the x-axis. Now let's go to our real challenge. We want to sketch arc secant of x. So how do we choose what branches to keep with the inverse of secant? Here's what secant looks like, or at least a couple of its bumps. And these asymptotes are happening at pi over 2 and minus pi over 2. This is where cosine is uh, 0. And when we reflect it, we get this. Now, what branches would you like to choose? So take a moment and decide for yourself which of them feels the most natural. Now, for the ones over here, we want to throw away everything so that uh, it passes the vertical line test over here. And I think it's easy to see that we should choose this one this branch over here. That's because it looks most like the square root of x to us, and so this one feels kind of natural, it's positive, it touches the x-axis, that's fine. But now, what do we do over here? Which of these things do we keep so that it passes the vertical line test? Here it's not so clear. We could choose this one if you want. So if we only kept this part, it would pass the vertical line test. But we could also choose this one. So this one would be nice because it's it's sort of more round, it's more like the square root function. But this one is also nice because it uh, it's closer to the x-axis. So which one did you choose? Well, there's no easy answer to which one we should choose. And by convention, we pick this one, so the first choice. But I don't think that it's obvious, and I don't think there's a really good reason for it. But if we had to write it down as a convention, it would be something like this. When choosing a branch of an inverse, we prefer one that is as near to the x-axis as possible. Now, these three conventions lead us to um, choosing most types of branches. And what we can see is the following conclusion or result, that sometimes inverses don't look beautiful and they don't look natural. Here's an exercise for you to complete.
repeat all of the steps here to construct arc cosecant. You will also have to make interesting choices for the branches. And now let's take some time to reflect. Does math always have one right answer, or are there personal choices that can be involved? Does beauty guide math? Thank you very much, and have a great day.